and the tips that haven't broken. Oh, I just broke a tip. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. I just realized my sleeves are two different lengths. Oh my goodness, she's all over the place today. But let me zoom you in for the eye look. So today I wanted to play with the eyeshadows in the Celestial Garden palette by Belle Butte Bar and Monica Jones. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it down below for you. A really exciting palette. But in my original review, I use mostly the water activated liners, so today I used the eyeshadows to do another graphic liner look. I'm sorry, I'm if nothing else predictable. I just, I love my graphic liner. I really, I set out to do a blendy look, and then I was like, ooh, what if I did a graphic liner look with these two shades? So I used this gorgeous matte deep teal, and then this gorgeous multi-chrome shade called Moonflower, which has like a blue-purple shift. Let me zoom you in even further. Yeah, I hope you can see that shift at least a little bit. It's just so pretty. I know it's gonna look so cool when I go outside and more natural lighting and I'm definitely gonna post a reel of this eye look so definitely go follow me on Instagram if you want to see that oh and I'm completely ignoring the fact that I have stars on my cheeks my friend by Allie Wood on Instagram just started her own makeup brand called Definition Beauty Co and she sells these really cool stencils so I use these star stencils today to give myself cute little star blush cheeks they're so cool definitely go follow them on Instagram too sorry I'm plugging so many Instagram accounts but what can I say I like to put you guys on to good stuff and this is good stuff right here but uh, that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to see my cute little star cheeks. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in makeup that I changed my mind about. So this is a series I've been doing on my channel for a while now, probably a couple years. And I started this series because as beauty YouTubers, we do a lot of first impressions, you know? And those can be really fun to see people's organic, raw reactions. But I do think that some Sometimes the, the adrenaline gets to us, the excitement of playing with something new gets to us, and we're not always looking at it with a clear mind. So I like to follow up with you guys and give you my second impressions, more truthfully like my 10th, 20th impressions because I've used all of these products a bunch of times, and we're not just talking about products that I fell out of love with, we're also talking about products that I maybe didn't like right away, but kind of grew to love, our relationship built and grew and strengthened over time. So yeah, I got a lot of exciting products to give you my 10th impressions on today. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to hear about all of the makeup I changed my mind about, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching because it's coming at you right now. All right. First makeup product I changed my mind about. I feel like this might not be surprising to anyone because I feel like a lot of us changed our minds about this. I bought into the Jones Road with the foundation hype on TikTok. There was that viral video of this one very popular TikToker who likes to apply her foundation in extreme amounts and just like rub it all over her face with her fingers. And then Bobby Brown made a reaction to that and I, I bought it because of that. And I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I just really had to know for myself and apparently at the time I thought spending $44 on a foundation was wise. I would not do that today. And in my initial review of this, I didn't make a dedicated review on it, but I did use it in a get ready with me. In my initial trial of this, I did really like it. Um, I, I still had issues with it in the initial trial. Like it smells so heavily fragranced. It apparently is not fragranced with perfume. It's fragranced with essential oils. My skin doesn't really care. My skin still breaks out when I use this. But if I use it over my Euphoria primer, it's better, freaking love my Euphoria pregame primer. It protects my skin from all of these irritating ingredients. But yeah, I really wish it were less heavily fragranced and I thought that right from the beginning, but I thought it was worth it because of the beautiful finish it gives. It is the definition of a skin-like finish. It's also incredibly light coverage, which I don't mind, you know. My current favorite foundation is my Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator and that's very light coverage. It's also like $5 compared to this $44 product, but let's not, let's not talk about that right now. But the reason I fell out of love with this is because this product just takes so much effort for how freaking expensive it is. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about the price anymore, but how can I not? I'm sorry, I'm a Virgo. I focus on things like that. And every time I use it, I have to mix it together with a metal spatula. I'm going to try to show you without spilling it, but this bad boy separates like you would not believe. And I know Bobby Brown says that's because there's lots of lovely oils in there, and I believe it. That's probably why it looks so skin-like, but it's a little annoying every time I want to do my foundation to have to pull out my little metal spatula 
spatula, mix this round for a minute, and then use the spatula to scoop it out because I don't want to cross contaminate by constantly putting my fingers in there. Really wish this came in different packaging. I really wish it came in some sort of pump packaging that you know had like one of those little metal balls in it that you could shake it up and then pump it out. I just think this is a little bogus like it's just it's too much to do for me you guys know me and if you don't know me i here let me tell you about me i like to spend a lot of time on my eye makeup and i usually do my eye makeup before foundation so by the time i get to foundation i'm just ready to get it on and get to blush because that's my my next favorite step after doing eyeliner is blush and eyeliner are like my favorite things so i just i really don't want to like be spending all this time just getting my foundation ready and then on top of that after you get the foundation on first First of all, you gotta apply it with your fingers because it seems like everything else you apply it with just does not work great, which is fine for me. I like to apply with my fingers. But after you apply it, then it literally takes two hours to fully set down. It might sound like I'm being dramatic. No, I tested it the first time I used this. It took a full two hours before I could touch my face without seeing foundation on my fingers. And granted, in the meantime, I still could go in with products over it, which is great. I seem to be able to go in with both cream and powder products on top of the foundation and it didn't get patchy or lift or anything so that's great but I don't like not being able to touch my face that whole time and I have incredibly dry skin too and even I felt very oily wearing this I am interested to give it another try now that we're transitioning into fall you know it's gonna get a little chillier outside so maybe I'll like it more as the weather gets cooler but right now I'm just not reaching for it I think this is more geared to people who like that clean girl makeup the no makeup makeup maybe people who have consumed concerns of like wrinkles on their skin I could be see that being absolutely wonderful for that because like I said it really does give a natural skin like finish and it's very hydrating but if you're someone like me who is gonna just like put a ton of other makeup on and doesn't have time to not be able to like lean on your face at all for the two hours after that I don't know I'm really trying to find good things to say about this I don't have much I don't have much unfortunately it was a bit of a miss for me and yeah this is definitely a foundation I changed my mind about. All right, now let's talk about some makeup products that I changed my mind about in a positive way. I'm not holding all of them, I'm just holding a select few shades of the Odin's Eyes Salmane Gel Eyeliner. So when I first reviewed the whole Odin's Eyes Salmane collection, these were like the least exciting thing to me. I kind of just like flew past them and I was disappointed by them because when I opened a lot of them, like the actual gel eyeliner fell out. I don't think these shades are one of them, but a couple of the shades like the whole eyeliner fell out the first time I opened them and the tips some of the tips were broken off so I just felt like they were really cheaply made and honestly that just like put a bad taste in my mouth and I didn't really give them a chance but over the last few weeks I've been doing more like pink and orange eye looks and apparently I don't have any other eyeliners in these shades so I was like ah whatever this will do in a pinch and I have quite literally fallen in love with these <laughs> they are so good they're so pigmented and they last so long in the waterline like this orange the the caps are misleading the caps are not the same shade as what is inside so i don't like that still out inside but look at this gorgeous orange shade how vibrant is she this little cap does not tell you how gorgeous and vibrant this shade is going to be same with the pink shade the orange is shade 002 by the way they all have number shades which i don't like and the pink is 001 but look at how vibrant this pink is like just such gorgeous vibrant shades all of the shades perform really well and all of the shades are vibrant too but these two in particular have quickly become favorites of mine and like i said they last so well in the waterline like i noticed them more than other eyeliners that I use like they really last all day they do not move they do not smudge so they're just they're really good I feel like I got a bad first impression you know maybe they got a little banged around in packaging even the ones that the eyeliner fully fell out I was able to put it back in and it was fine so like I know they're not perfect but you know just color wise and how long wearing wise they are I just keep reaching for these especially this orange if I had to recommend one for you it's shade 002 this freaking orange shade look at this in my waterline and this eye look I did yesterday. It's just I never thought I could get this excited about a gel eyeliner and these have me getting really excited. I'm gonna have to try to do some graphic liner looks with them. I've only been wearing them in my waterline for now but they are really super creamy and the tips that haven't broken. Oh I just broke a tip. I just broke the tip off of mine so that's a bummer. Oh my 
my gosh, we're quickly flying off the rails. Let me try to not break this pink tip so I can show you when they first arrive how sharp and pointy the tip is. So I feel like this would be really good for doing graphic liner. And I don't know, I'll have to see if that sharpener works for the other shade. But yeah, these Odin Size Soul Man Gel Liners are definitely a makeup product that I changed my mind about. All right, let's talk about another makeup product that I changed my mind about in a positive way. It is the About Face Brow Artist Eyebrow Pencil. Is that what it's called? Yes. Brow Artist Eyebrow Pencil. I got it exactly right. I have the shade Soft Black. It's a beautiful shade for me. It's a beautiful formula. I didn't necessarily give this a bad review when I first got it, but I definitely glazed over it. Like, I got this at the same time as I got the About Face Longwear Gel Liners, and those are chef's kiss. I loved those right from the get, whereas these, I was kind of like, I don't know, it's another eyebrow pencil. What do I care? Mm -hmm. You should care because it's your freaking favorite brow pencil now past me. No, seriously It's so good. I used to really hate brow pencils that had tips like this where it's like shaped like a triangle Looks like a little pyramid here I used to think those were bad because I felt like they never actually stayed pointy This stays pointy the whole way down. Look at this point still very pointy, still very pointy despite me using it a lot. I can still get little hair like strokes in the front of my brow with these. I can also fill in the body of my brows so quick. I can use this with or without a brow wax or brow soap. It's great for my light brow days. It's great for my heavier brow days. It's just a really good all around brow pencil. And if you have dark hair like me, I don't know, you probably know that sometimes finding a brow pencil that doesn't pull red can be really difficult and soft black is like the perfect shade for me. So I love that. And yeah, I don't know, I just really wrote off this brow pencil as being just another brow pencil the first time I tried it and now it's like the only brow pencil I'll use and every time I get new brow pencils in PR I'm always like that's fine but not as good as my about face brow pencil so highly recommend it it's definitely a makeup product that I changed my mind about all right now back to being a little bit negative and we're gonna talk about a makeup product I changed my mind about in a not so positive way it's the Milani cheek kiss blush I bought this from TJ Maxx so luckily I didn't waste a lot of money on it because it was only three dollars and it's I I can maybe still get some use out of it. I don't know. It's the shade I Cherry Issue, which is why I bought it, because it's like a gorgeous red blush that blends out to be kind of like a nice pinky red moment here. It's such a gorgeous wearable red blush. I love the color. The formula, uh, I don't know what I'm missing here with the formula, but I have not been able to make this formula work on my cheeks at all. As you can see, it's really emollient and nice and creamy, which is fabulous until you're trying to blend it out on your cheeks and it keeps just like picking up the product on your brush and even when I've tried applying it with my fingers I don't I don't know it just you get better pigmentation if you apply it with your fingers I will say versus a brush I feel like I'm trying to like build and build and build and build and I just keep taking off more product onto the brush whereas at least with your fingers you can like build up some pigmentation but I still felt like it kept picking up, you know, when I was doing other steps of my makeup routine, just putting on my mascara afterwards, all of the blush ended up on the side of my hand, which maybe this should be the last step in your routine, but then that makes me nervous that I'm gonna walk outside and it's gonna like get dust stuck to it because it doesn't really feel like it sets down, it just kind of stays sticky. And I believe I've tried setting this with a powder blush before and it just like didn't take, I don't know, this just, it always looks patchy when I wear it, which is a huge bummer because like I've said a thousand times, the color, I'm in love. I'm in love with the color. So if you have any dupe recommendations for a blush in this color that also blends out to like this gorgeous pinky shade, I would love to hear it. Maybe I'll end up using this as a lip product. I don't know. Maybe it'll look good on the lips because like I said, it's very, very emollient. And if you know of a way to make this blush formula work and I'm just applying it wrong, please let me know. I don't know. Maybe I should apply it with a beauty sponge, even though I really don't like using a beauty sponge most of the time. But if that's the only way I can apply it, then I'll do it. So let me know if you know a good way to apply this. But yeah, this is a makeup product that I sadly changed my mind about and I don't like it as much as I did when I first tried it. Shall we take a moment of peace and prosperity and tranquility and div div divineness to enjoy Bert sleeping and he's so sweet as I'm shrieking. I'm sorry Bert, sorry for yelling, but he's just such a sweet man and it brings me a lot of joy to see him sleep. So I hope it does for you too. Okay, back to me. All right, moving on to the last makeup product I changed my mind about. This product I have previously featured in a video where I'm pretty sure I talked about products that I think are not worth the hype. So for that, I am sorry, KBD Tattoo Liner. Here's the deal. I think that the first couple times I tried 
tried this, I got a dud literally two separate times purchasing it, which is not great, KBD. I don't know. It's, I, I feel like that I purchased it myself one time back in college, like in 2016, and I couldn't get any product to come out. And then KBD sent me PR earlier in the year, and the one they sent me, the product did not come out. And then they sent me another one with the launch of their tattoo pencil liners, and this one is phenomenal. So not a great ratio, not great, but two out of the three I've purchased have ended up being duds. But you know, in a in a real life scenario, I guess you could always take it back and return it to the store. But the last one I got was PR, so like obviously you couldn't do that. But now that I have one that works really well, I'm in love. I really like this product. It shows up pigmented right from the jump on my hand now, which is why I think I must have just gotten a bad one before. And what I love using this for the most is the inner corner of my graphic liner. People always ask me, what brush do you do to get this little extended inner corner here? And I'm wearing eyeshadow today, so like I'd, I just used an angled eyeshadow brush for that. But if I'm wearing black eyeliner and I want to extend my inner corner, I'll just reach for this because you can get such micro fine lines with this. You know what, it's fine. I think it'll look cool with this look, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the liner just so I can demonstrate what I mean for you. Look at how easily it is to get into this inner corner and just make a nice sharp little line there. You can even hold it like this if that's easier for you. It just makes such nice fine lines, so defined sometimes, even if I'm just trying to like make my lash line look a little fuller for a, an eyeshadow graphic liner look, I'll go just like pop this out here just gives it a little bit of depth I just what did I get on the side of my face oh that blush shoot but yeah I just I get a lot of use out of this product look at how micro fine the tip is and I like that it's not a felt tip it's kind of like an interesting brush tip so it doesn't fray at all I know it's an issue I have with felt tip liners sometimes is they'll start to fray after a while and then you're like pulling little like fibers off of them and it's a real hassle whereas I haven't had that issue with this so yeah like I've said a thousand times I really just think I got a dud of this guy the first few times that I, that I got it. But yeah, I get a lot of use out of this now. I've been wearing a lot of black eyeliner lately. Even now, I can just see my eyeliner looks so much sharper than it did before. This is just like the, the sharpest pen liner that I've used. You know, it's the closest I can get to like my actual graphic liner brushes. But even sometimes with my graphic liner brushes, it's just like awkward to hold them in the inner corner. So I do really reach for this a lot. And it's definitely a makeup product I changed my mind about. What is on my face? What did I get? <gasps> oh no, I got my lipstick all over my face. Oh, she's a mess. She's an absolute mess. This brown lipstick is from ColourPop. I really like it, but I keep forgetting that it's not a matte finish. It's like a creamy, satiny finish, and I keep accidentally touching it. It's the shade Les Du, though. It's very pretty. I like the dark brown shade. But anyway... Yeah, we've reached the end of the video. Those are all of the makeup products that I've changed my mind about and I wanted to talk to you here today. I'm still smudged everywhere. Just try to ignore it. But I would love to hear if you've tried any of these makeup products and if you still love or not love them. I don't want to say hate because I don't hate any of the products that I talked about today. Even the ones that I've, I've fallen out of love with, I still don't hate. You know, I'm still civil with them. We get along for the kids for sure. But <laughs> the kid for Bert, I guess. I don't know. Oh um, yeah, but just let me know if you've tried any of these products. Let me know if you have any makeup products that you changed your mind about. Maybe the, the second or tenth time that you tried it. I think it's very healthy to change your mind. I think we should all change our mind about makeup more. You know, just because you liked something when you first got it doesn't mean you have to like it forever. And sometimes you like something because it was the best you've tried, like, at the time. Like, that used to be me with the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I used to say it was my favorite bronzer. I'm pretty sure I even said it was my favorite bronzer of 28 if you want to go back and watch that video. But now I hate that bronzer. That one I will say I hate. It's orange on me. I hate it because it is the wrong shade for me. But at the time, it was like the only bronzer I had ever used. And at least it blended well. So even though it was orange. But you know, sometimes you just gotta wait until you find something better. And you know, maybe in the future I'll be making another makeup I changed my mind about video and talking about these products I just said that I fell in love with that I no longer love. So... All this to say, I will certainly keep you updated, but I thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, check out my description box for all of the makeup products on my face today. Also in my description box, I'll have a bunch of Black Lives Matter resources, resources to support the Asian American community, resources to support the LGBTQ plus community, and resources to support Ukraine. So please click on those links if you haven't yet. And I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!